Just a few weeks into the winter season and the national power utility is taking strain. And this time ESCOM says illegal connections are one of its main concerns. It's a decades-long problem and it's been proliferating in almost every informal community throughout the country, leaving dangerously exposed live wires that could cost lives. McFarlane Maledi examines this deadly practice in the city of Etiquini. Electricity. It's essential to everyday life, whether you live in a house, in the suburbs, or a shack in a township. People need it, and they'll get it, even if it means stealing it. For now, we don't have any option. We can't live in a dark. Yes. No one can live in a dark. Impoverished communities around South Africa take matters into their own hands when municipalities fail to deliver basic services. But it doesn't come without grave consequences. Illegal electricity connections don't just overload an already struggling electricity grid. It impacts on the economy in millions of rands in lost revenue. And it's dangerous. These makeshift connections cost lives. 12-year-old Kyle O'Reilly was electrocuted while playing in the Umbelo Canal in Durban. His father, Wayne, is devastated. Uh, just, no, it breaks my heart. Eh? It, it, I won't joke to you. It breaks my heart badly. I don't know that I've lost... I lost such a precious gem. Kyle and his friends were playing along a nature trail on a Sunday afternoon. They were jumping over the sandbanks when Kyle unwittingly touched a suspended cable. It was, in fact, a live electrical wire. He said when you grabbed a cable when you'd slipped, that's when you started getting electrocuted. And the kids went down to try and help him and assist him, and they couldn't get close enough. Kyle died on the scene. It was an illegal electricity connection that fed power to a nearby informal settlement. To see my son go out that way is... That, that is totally, totally, totally unjustified. It's uncalled for. You know, it's, it's wrong. By all means, wrong, wrong, wrong. But Kyle O'Reilly is not the first, and he won't be the last to die because of illegal electricity connections. Fatalities are often underreported, according to Etiquini Municipality. It's a daily reality for people like Sfisom Somi, who live in informal settlements all over South Africa. Everyone who sees staying here is aware that there is electricity and electricity is dangerous to us. How's, how does this work? Is this where oh, the source is? We're getting the electricity, there's a wire from coming from the source. Okay. Then it's come here, from here, then it's going to be distributed to the houses. But are you guys qualified? I want to buy in are No one is qualified. We does our son. Electricity theft amounts to 4% of Etiquini municipality's annual losses, sitting at just over 300 million rand every year. Across the country, it's even become an income stream for some who take advantage of people who are desperate for basic services. So there are a couple of ways of getting connected in an informal settlement. You can take your chances and do it yourself. Alternatively, someone in the community offers the service, either at a monthly connection fee ranging from 30 to 50 rand, or you can pay a once-off fee of a couple of hundred bucks. In most informal settlements, the illegal networks have already been established by amateur electricians known as izinyoga, meaning snakes. It's a dangerous job, but the money is good. A once-off connection could cost as much as 1,500 rand. We sent in an operative to meet a guy who claims to know the ins and outs of illegal electricity networks. He claims he doesn't do new illegal connections. He specializes in modifications to existing dodgy networks created by Izinyoga. His services are still illegal, but are a bit cheaper because the risks are lower. We stopped him on the way to one of these jobs. Who qualified when I'm taking an electrician? I've got to start afresh and do the trade test. And, uh... You know what you're doing is illegal? No, officially of mm -hmm. I know them. Mm -hmm. Now, you should have told him that you must catch the big mamba for that, not me. Mm -hmm. I'm a small one if I can say. The so-called big mambas or izinyoga are hard to catch because communities are reluctant to out these illegal connectors as they feel indebted to them for giving them electricity when municipalities fail them. And if authorities manage to catch them, current fining system is not a deterrent, with fines as little as 500 rand, explains Bonelum Tunu from the Durban Metro Police. If those people get caught 
either the, the, the community members or the illegal connectors, they pay that fine. The fine is not, uh, does not fit the crime. Mm -hmm. Technical advisor for the KZN Electrical Contractors Association, Chris Collings, accompanied us to another informal settlement to check some of these connections. Is this even acceptable electrical work though? Never, never, never. For this is deadly. It's not even two meters off the ground. So, so when you touch that, you know, create a current. Uh -huh. You need 100, 200 milliamps amps to kill you, uh -huh. and this will do it for you. Not surprisingly, the electrical work inside some of the structures were also not up to scratch. This is very hazardous. Um, mm -hmm. There's no protection. This could cause a fire. Mm -hmm. There are blatant hazards visible all over the settlement. Here, a piece of wood separates two cables that are creating an electrical short. To make matters worse, it's near the communal tap. So you stand in a pool of water and you touch the this, this stick hanging down, which is now a meter off the ground. Mm -hmm. It's another possible electrocution. The Durban Metro Police provide law enforcement support to Etequini Municipality during official disconnection sweeps. Teams are physically threatened and the situation turns violent quickly, explains Nkono. They get stoned, they get attacked. At some point they had to shoot back using live ammunition to, to escape the attack from the community because the community just does not want these disconnections to take place. But these disconnections are temporary, explains Feso. Communities jump into action as soon as the municipality leaves the settlement. We try by all means to get another cable. And you put it straight back and up again? Try to put it back, because there's nothing that you can do. While these communities are tapping in for free, Durban Ward Councillor Pete Graham says nothing is for free. It comes at a cost to ratepayers and legal electricity users. An electricity grid has to be balanced at all times. So what we've got here is excess load being pulled out of the grid. If a cable has been put in here illegally, it is, has removed power from someone else. So therefore it impacts everybody. Although these settlements are usually adjacent to suburban areas, they go widely unnoticed. Nkunu believes the root problem with illegal connections is land invasions that lead to the formation of informal settlements. People move in illegally and they occupy that land. It becomes an establishment and then that establishment then must be followed by services. The municipality is now supposed to provide uh, uh, waste removal, water, electricity and so forth and so forth. So even though the Etikwini municipality had agreed to give us an interview after countless calls, emails and messages, they refused to speak to us on camera about the illegal connections and pulled out at the last moment. In a subsequent email, the city stated it is dedicated to controlling leaking revenue through theft by doing continuous sweeps and disconnections and spends over 100 million rand every year on curbing electricity theft specifically. Criticism, though, is that the city is not doing enough to address illegal connections. The city is under-resourced. Uh, given the number of uh, settlements like this and the number of illegal connections, uh, the city is behind the power curve all the time. It's a complex issue of balancing the fight against criminality and providing essential services to communities, observes Mkono. As much as the city sends these units, including Metropolis, to go and get compliance. The city must also have another program to electrify the area, to, to connect properly, to create an infrastructure that is legal in that informal settlement up until people have moved to the proper houses. But without a workable solution, it will remain a daily struggle for people like Sfiso, who are forced to steal electricity and risk their lives. They are human beings like the others, so they need uh, everything. Are you willing to pay for it? Yes, we're willing to pay for everything. But Ward Councillor Graham feels the city is failing to address the needs of the people. People don't want to move out to the middle of nowhere where they've got no access to resources, where there's no employment, uh, where there's no schooling, where there's no police. Until the city realises that it is them that are the cause of this problem. Politics hindering service delivery. That is what we have in Etiquini.